Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. One of the things that I like to do in each of my introductory astronomy classes is to begin the class with the astronomy picture of the day from the NASA website that is apod.nasa.gov apod. And today's picture for October the 26th of 2019, well, it is titled Gravity's Grin. So what do we see here? Well, an image perhaps reminiscent of the Cheshire Cat, and that's uh, that grin with the eyes, the eyes glowing brightly, and the two eyes that we see are actually elliptical galaxies. So these are large elliptical galaxies, and part of a galaxy cluster. Now, the grin itself is actually a distorted galaxy, not actually distorted in that it's not really being torn apart or anything. In essence, these are actually more distant galaxies. So all of the arcs that we see around these are galaxies that are well behind the two elliptical galaxies that we see. And those galaxies are not being ripped apart, as I've said, but are actually having their light distorted. So as the light travels through the gravitational field uh, of this cluster of galaxies, it gets distorted and changed, and we end up seeing things like arcs like this. Now, this is something that was predicted by Einstein's general theory of relativity well over 100 years ago now. Uh, that was predicted, and that is a new description of gravity that describes gravity instead of a force between objects, as Isaac Newton gave us, as a distortion of space and time. So essentially, a large mass like this galaxy cluster uh, will distort the space and time around it. Light has to travel through that distorted space, and therefore its path changes. So we get all of these multiple images of distant galaxies. And in fact, if you could have a very strong source of gravity perfectly lined up with a distant galaxy or a distant object, then you would get what we'd call an Einstein ring or a ring of material around the galaxy, around the central galaxies. So it would be if everything were lined up perfect, we would get that. But of course, that will, never, that will not happen. So we tend to see just arcs and parts of this when we look at images like these. Now, what can we learn from this other than getting interesting pictures like the one we see today? Well, it also can tell us about the structure of these galaxy clusters. And that is because the, the gravity, the amount of material there, we can figure out based on the bending of light we see from the galaxies behind. Now, the more matter there is, the more bending there will be. And we can then do calculations to figure out the mass of the galaxy clusters. And what we find is that the mass of the galaxy clusters is far more than the visible light that we can see from them. And by visible light or x-rays or infrared or anything else, what we can see from these galaxy clusters does not come near to accounting for the actual mass that must be there under general relativity to explain the bending of light that we see. And it has led us to the concept of dark matter. And this is material that makes up part of the mass of this cluster, but does not give off any light. And we find that, gallic, that dark matter must account for, uh, depending on the exact situation, somewhere between maybe 50 and 100 times the amount of visible matter that we see. Which means that for every galaxy we see in a cluster, there have to be 50 or so galaxies worth of dark matter in order to account for things like the gravitational lensing that we see in the image called Gravity's Grin today. So that was our picture of the day for October the 26th of 2019. It was titled Gravity's Grin. We'll be back again tomorrow for the next picture previewed to be ghostly sky. So we'll see what that is about tomorrow. And until then, have a great day, everyone, and I will see you in class.